So at the Smith College Museum of Art from July 12th until October uh, 6th, we have a show called Eye on the Street, Trends in 1960s and 70s Photography. Um, and it showcases the work of three photographers working in this um, period of about 10 years from the late 60s until the late 1970s. Um, Gary Winogrand, Danny Lyon, and Joel Merowitz. Um, Gary Winogrand is the oldest of the three and his particular um, his particular style is uh, more of a candid, it's called the snapshot aesthetic is what, um, what he invented. And he worked with a 35 millimeter camera, just kind of walking around the street and taking pictures of anonymous women that he didn't know, literally just obsessively taking pictures from early in the morning until late at night. And um, he was really interested in the social environment of New York City and observing the way in which women carried themselves and interacted with other people in the city um, and really taking a social picture of the city at that time. Danny Lyon, I'll talk about him first. Um, so he's actually a documentary photographer by trade. Um, he's, he's not so much a traditional street photographer, um, but he did a particular body of work which I think engages really interesting is interestingly with the history of street photography um, in 1967 he did a series called the destruction of lower manhattan in which he basically set up camp in this particular 19th century mercantile neighborhood in in new york city that was set to be demolished and where um, what was going to take its place was actually the financial district of new york so that's battery park city and the world trade center and a bunch of other um, iconic buildings in that part of manhattan and this was a particularly uh, fascinating moment in New York City's history and Danny Lyon recognized that something big was changing here and he, he was actually really young. He had just gotten out of college. He was about 24 and had just spent two years riding around um, in a motorcycle gang, the Chicago Outlaws, and he landed back in New York City, which is actually his hometown, um, and noticed that this entire neighborhood was going to be demolished. and literally lived in that part of the city and um, photographed this whole process every day um, for six months. So he followed around, he like tracked the destruction, he like mapped it out and like really documented the buildings and their in their sort of dying days and some of the last people that inhabited those buildings, a lot of like bums and um, you know young kids kind of exploring the ruins and he eventually kind of shifted his focus to look at the demolition workers themselves and kind of um, tell their story of how they work for next to nothing, risking their lives um, in order to take down buildings which were built about 100 years before by workers just like them. So, um, and then Joel Merowitz, who is actually a pioneer of color photography, was working in the late 1970s, and he actually began his work with Gary Winogrand, literally friends, friends and fellow photographers in the early 1960s, walking around the streets, um, taking photographs, and Merowitz eventually became interested in color photography, which was not very, um, was not very respected until the 70s. It was Seen, seen as something that was used in advertising and that was basically it and it wasn't to be taken as seriously as black and white photography. So um, he was a he was a great proponent in, in creating a shift to uh, really considering color photography as an art form. Um, his work is very different from Winogrand's and Lyons in that his work is more about personal connections with the city. Um, he takes pictures of places that look mundane but there are moments in which he felt inspired and he felt that the light on a building, the natural light on a building was beautiful and worth documenting, even if the place wasn't beautiful itself, if, if it was a parking garage or a, um, or a freight loading dock or you know something that most of us would just walk by and think nothing of. So um, they're very poetic and very, very thoughtful, even though they're not what we would normally deem to be beautiful places. It's interesting that the work of these three photographers is so different, even though they're all documenting the same city in the same 10 year time frame, but they're looking at different aspects of what it, what it is to be in the city, be it 
social interactions and the social environment, as in Winogrand's work. Right. Lyon is looking at the city as sort of a changing organism that's constantly being modernized and constantly being improved upon. And he's looking at that and um, really putting his, literally putting his lens towards that and um, illuminating something about American society and how we constantly need to improve everything. So, Merowitz's work is, is more of a personal encounter with particular moments in time in a particular city. Um, but what's interesting about his work is that, you know, be it New York or St. Louis or any other city in the U.S., they all kind of look sort of similar, um, and they all have a particular, particularly beautiful quality about them um, in the mundane that's not the most recognizable buildings in the city. It's not, you know, Central Park. It's, it's you know, walking by a shop that we, you know, normally wouldn't recognize and seeing the beauty in that.